research and discovery. Futurists. This 200 meter tower is one of the tools being used to crack one of the trickiest problems in climate science, clouds. So we are here now at uh, 100 meters at the Kabau mast uh, of the Dutch Met Office. And uh, what we are doing here, we are measuring uh, temperature, humidity and the wind in this tower. And we're doing that to understand how the clouds are being formed. Cloud watching instruments are scattered across this site in the Dutch countryside, including radar to measure cloud droplets, solar radiation sensors and a laser to track cloud height. The data gathered here feeds into a European Union research project led by Pierre Sebesma, a senior scientist at the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute. It's essential research because the cloud question has profound implications for the study of climate change. The only uh, uh, tool to look into the future are climate models. And we're using climate models to make climate scenarios for the 21st century and we have a, a a dozen of them, and they give different answers for how the temperature will change in the 21st century. And we know also that this uncertainty is mainly due to the clouds. How are clouds represented in these climate models? Clouds are one of the defining features of our planet. On average, two-thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by clouds. But if we keep on polluting the atmosphere, will that always be the case? If in climate change, uh, the, the only thing that would change would be that we just increase our uh, greenhouse gases, such as CO2, it would be a relatively simple problem. And the, uh, the global temperature with a doubling of CO2 would just increase by 1.2 degrees. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, our planet, our, our climate is a dynamical system and our clouds will respond to that global increase of temperature. This dynamic system is being studied from different angles within the Euclid's European project. Among the cloud-busting research team is one of the contributors to the UN's IPCC reports on climate change. Sandrine Bonny stresses that even understanding the basics of cloud's role in climate is complex and sometimes produces conflicting results. Different types of clouds have different impacts on radiation, on the energy balance of the Earth. For example, low clouds have a significant cooling effect because they're strong reflectors of the sun, but they contribute little to the greenhouse effect. On the other hand, very high clouds have a considerable impact on the greenhouse effect, but a rather weak cooling effect. Sandrine uses satellite data to study clouds from space and compare that with the clouds in climate models. In the past, scientists could only see if there was cloud cover, not how deep or layered it was. But in recent years, that's changed. For a couple of years now, since the launch of the Calypso and CloudSat satellites in 2006, we've had completely new information about the vertical structure of the clouds that will allow us to better understand the conditions of cloud formation and to better evaluate the realism of the clouds simulated in our models. Having a 3D view of clouds from space has been an eye-opening experience for scientists as they compare their models with reality. This map shows the distribution of low clouds observed by the Calypso satellite during 2008. In the old version of the model, we can see that the model seriously underestimates the low-level cloud cover compared to observations. In the more recent model, we managed to simulate the clouds a little better.
those low clouds are one of the most difficult for climate models to reproduce and predict. Back in the Netherlands, another partner in the Euclips project is looking at the problem on a much smaller scale. We are using uh, the state-of-the-art uh, turbulence uh, models uh, in which you really can zoom in uh, at scales of say uh, 30 meters. So basically you can really see what's happening in clouds in terms of dynamics, uh, transport of uh, heat and, uh, and moisture. Stefan de Rode's 3D computer simulations offer a detailed and interactive way to study low clouds. He wants to know if there will be more or less cloud cover in a warmer climate. And that means experimenting with different parameters. And if we are able to show that uh, our model results are very close or in a good agreement with the aircraft observations, then we can do sensitivity tests. So we can play with the external forcings, meaning that what happens if we increase the sea surface temperature? What happens if the mean horizontal wind uh, changes? Uh, what happens uh, if the uh, temperature uh, at one kilometer uh, height, uh, if it increases? Uh, how does that affect the cloud amount uh, in the lower part of the uh, atmosphere? Uh, these are the questions uh, we are asking with our model. Uh. At the moment, the study of clouds seems to offer more questions than answers. But some new discoveries have been made using satellite data and ground observation. One of the things we are finding is that actually there are more mid-level clouds than, than that we thought initially. And also a lot of these mid-level clouds, uh, so not the low, not the high, but really in between, a lot of those mid-level clouds are also lacking in climate models. Part of the difficulty in monitoring clouds on a global scale is that our atmosphere can't be broken down into easily manipulated units. Climate models, they, they, they run on a rather coarse resolution, as we say. Essentially, they are blind for everything smaller than 100 kilometers. And as, as you might know, I mean, clouds, most of our clouds that we see are smaller than 100 kilometers. We want to get a better grip on them, so we need to measure them better, as we are doing here at, uh, at Kabau, or, or from, from space with satellites. And we need to, to better uh, uh, model them with, with high resolution models to understand them better, and then put all those results into climate models in order to make better predictions. Those predictions will in turn be fed into the next IPCC report on climate change due out in 2013.